Coins, medals, they're small, they're boring, right? Wrong. My name's Henry Flynn, and I'm the project curator for the Money and Medals Network here at the British Museum, and welcome to my corner. The Money and Medals Network is a subject specialist network that exists to provide help, support and advice to people working and volunteering in the UK museum sector with collections of coins, medals and banknotes and associated objects. We had an exhibition about the, the network recently that was on in Gallery 69A here at the British Museum and it was intended to celebrate the work of the network which had uh, just reached its 10th anniversary this year, 2018. We were very lucky to be able to have six participating members of the network represented through loan objects. And I have some examples to show you here. And this is a great example to use because these are all from a military museum. Uh, the Regimental Museum of the Royal Welsh very kindly um, lent us these objects. And what was particularly interesting about them is that they all relate to someone who, after serving in the army, worked right here in the British Museum. Henry Hook was an ordinary working class man who was born in a village called Churchham in Gloucestershire. Uh, he was born in 1850. He was an agricultural labourer, um, but what he um, felt that he needed to do, like many people um, like him, was join the army. He became part of the, the B Company 2nd Battalion 24th Foot. He found himself slap bang in the middle of the, the Battle of Rourke's Drift. To sum up very briefly, what happened was the former missionary station uh, and, and supply camp Rourke's Drift, which was being defended by around about 100 British soldiers, it was attacked by around 4,000 Zulu warriors um, overnight. And these, these 100 men successfully defended the settlement. Hook was involved in helping patients from a hospital building escape uh, during this siege. Um, he was involved with uh, another soldier um, by sort of breaking holes through partition walls to help these injured men escape uh, to safety. Uh, when the battle was all over, he was awarded the Victoria Cross for gallantry. After that, in 1880, he decided to buy himself out of the army and came back to England. When he was back in England, he was looking for work, found himself living in London, and he wanted to work right here in the British Museum. What he wanted to do was become, his job title was Inside Duster of the Books in the Iron Library, and that's the library that surrounds the, the round reading room, which actually is just through that door there. Being a Victoria Cross winner, it seems that that wasn't quite enough for the trustees of the British Museum at the time. He called in some favours to help him get this job. Uh, one of the favours he called in was from his former commanding officer, the commanding officer of his regiment, Lord Chelmsford. And Chelmsford wrote on his behalf to the principal librarian. We didn't have a director back then, we had a principal librarian. Chelmsford wrote to the principal librarian on Hook's behalf in the interest of just, just helping him to get this job, get him started here. And this letter here is a loan object from the uh, Regimental Museum of the Royal Welsh. I mean, you can see that this is, um, uh, this is a, hand, a handwritten letter and the handwriting is a little tricky to decipher uh, with the best will in the world. Luckily for me, I've got some um, uh, transcriptions here. And this letter from Chelmsford says, it has given me great pleasure to be of some slight service to you by writing you in your favour to the principal librarian. The promise I made to you at Rourke's Drift, I shall always be ready to keep it to the best of my abilities, as I can never forget those who made such a stand and behaved as nobly on that memorable occasion. Believe me always, your well-wisher, Chelmsford. It's nice, isn't it? So, uh, this letter um, did help out Hook. Hook got the job, and he started working here around about 1882. He wore his medals to work, which I think is really nice. He would have worn an apron over his ordinary clothes, but there are um, references to him um, wearing the medals underneath his apron. The, the, the ribbons could be seen peeking above the apron, so uh, obviously very proud of having won these medals. Uh, and he was promoted to the position of umbrella attendant. And he had a very, very specific responsibility in the cloakroom. He looked after the umbrellas and the walking sticks of people who came to use the books in the library. He very much enjoyed working here, but had health problems. He had received a head wound uh, from a spear during the, the Siege of Rourke's Drift. That didn't trouble him too much when he was a young man in his 20s, but by the time he was getting into his 50s, he started to have uh, very painful headaches regularly. He'd had breathing problems when he started working here at the BM, which was not helped by all the dusty work he was doing with dusting the books. And in fact, he'd developed consumption. Uh, he resigned uh, his post here uh, in uh, December 1904 and went back to Gloucestershire, which was at his doctor's suggestion that the, the, the Gloucestershire air might do him some good. 
Sadly, uh, he did in fact die in 1905, uh, just a couple of months short of his 55th birthday. But here we have a very nice photograph of him. So this is from the family archive, which is now being donated to the Regimental Museum of the Royal Welsh. And this is Hook uh, in his uniform here, uh, wearing his Victoria Cross and South Africa campaign medal. You can see that he has sergeant stripes on here. Uh, this doesn't mean that he was a sergeant in the regular army because he, he, he was only a private when he bought himself out uh, of the regular army, but he joined the volunteers and this is actually him in his Royal Fusiliers uniform where he did attain the rank of sergeant. This photograph has uh, written on the back here, uh, the year 1905, which indicates that perhaps it's one of the very last photographs of him ever taken. This picture, um, is of Hook's daughters from his second marriage. Uh, here they are. This was taken shortly after Hook's death. Um, but if you look closely here on the dress of Hook's eldest daughter, this is Victoria Catherine, VC, interesting. Uh, and she's wearing two tiny little medals here. These are actually Hook's miniatures. So the medal miniatures would have been worn to formal occasions. It's not the actual Victoria Cross. Um, it's the medal that he would have worn to formal dinners, for example. He'd have had this pinned to his dress uniform uh, for formal occasions like that. So she's wearing the miniatures there. We were very lucky to be able to feature those very miniatures in the exhibition. And here they are. Here's the miniature Victoria Cross and the miniature South Africa campaign medal. And now I want to just talk to you about the final object here. This is a letter written to Hook's widow, his second wife, Ada, uh, after he died in 1905. And it's a very heartfelt letter uh, from one of his former comrades. This is from John Williams, VC, another Victoria Cross winner at Rourke's Drift. And Williams was in fact one of the people who was with Hook when they were rescuing people from the burning hospital building. And what it says is, Madam, it is with deep regret I learn from this morning's mail of the death of my old comrade in arms, your late husband, Henry Hook VC. I tender to you my sincere sympathy in this, the hour of your bereavement, and trust you will find some solace in the thought your late beloved husband's memory will be cherished for his worth as a hero and a man so long as English history is read. I remain, dear madam, yours very truly, John Williams VC. And there we have it. Uh, we chose to display um, these letters and the photograph together with uh, the medals as the star object at the bottom of the showcase. It really helps to bring that person's story to life for a whole new audience. And having these objects brought to the British Museum where this gentleman worked was a very, very nice connection to make. And I think it was, it's a very, very powerful story to tell. And illustrative of the fact that although medals are small, they're certainly not boring. So there we are. Thank you very much indeed for listening. If you'd like to find out more about the Money and Medals Network or indeed more Curators Corners, then please have a look at the links to my left. And don't forget to subscribe to the British Museum YouTube channel. It's really good.